So in our previous video, we looked at how we could configure NPS using a wizard. But if we want more detail, we can configure over here using these different settings. So let's start with looking at Radius clients and servers. Now, the Radius clients here, remember these are your network access points. So wireless access point switches, whatever. Whatever is going, whatever clients are going to be connecting to, VPN servers, you name it. So we need to set up the Radius clients in order to be able to accept authentication requests from those Radius clients. Radius servers allow us to forward requests to Radius servers if we're setting this thing up as a Radius proxy. Okay, so let's start by looking at how to configure a Radius client. Now, even though I didn't save my configuration, it still saved my Radius client from my wizard, so I'm going to go ahead and take that out. And I'm going to add in a new Radius client. So I'm going to right click and say give me a new client. So I can choose to enable or disable the Radius client. I can choose to use an existing template if I've created any. I haven't. So I'm going to create a new one here, and I'm going to enable it automatically. So my friendly name is going to be, let's say, VPN Server. I'm going to set an IP address for it, 192.168.5.20. I could verify it, except that doesn't actually exist, so... I'm not going to do that. And like we did with the radius when we were going through the wizard, we need to set a, set a shared secret for the client and the server to encrypt communication back and forth between. And like we talked about before, it should be fairly long, fairly complex. Uh, this is pretty straightforward, but I'm just using it for a demo. So we can also go to advanced and we can specify the radius format and whether access requests must contain the message authenticator attribute all right if we're done with that we just hit okay and that defines a radius client now we're going to have to go to the radius client and configure it to use us as a radius server as well but this is the beginning. This is where we set up the radius client. Now, if we are just authenticating locally, so this is going to be our radius server and we're not going to use this as a proxy, then we're pretty much set. But if we're going to use a proxy, then we need to set up remote radius server groups. So I'm going to right click and create new, and this will allow me to set up a new group with specific radius servers. So I'm going to set up a group called VPN Access. Actually, let me VPN Authentication Services, AUTH SCRV. Okay, and then I'm going to add a server to this. Now I can use a template if I have any. I don't. So I'm going to set a server IP address. Let's do 4.10. And then for the server, I can set the authentication and accounting and the load balancing. Now let's start with the authentication and accounting thing. We need to set the authentication port. That's going to be a default. I need to set a shared secret password again. Now you'll notice that in all of this communication, we're using shared secrets, which means we're using synchronous uh, or not. Yeah, synchronous encryption. We're using one key, we're not using certificates. So these are going to be shared secrets, which is pretty straightforward. So I'm going to go ahead and set a shared secret. And then we can request the, uh, the identify that the request must contain the message authenticator attribute. And then we can set up accounting as well. Now, this is how we are going to communicate with that radius server. Remember, in this configuration, this device is functioning as a radius proxy. This will identify the radius server. Now, we could have more than one server, and that's where this load balancing thing comes in. So, we have a priority and a wait. The priority indicates the status of the server. So, we could have a priority one, and we could have another server with priority two, and another server with priority three. Now, what happens, though, is if we do that, we don't actually load balance, because all requests will go to the priority one server. The lower the number, the higher the priority. So that's really not going to help us. But the other thing we can do is we can set multiple devices with the same priority, and then assign them different weights or even the same weight. So the weight is how many requests go to, what percentage of requests go to this server 
with all the other servers that are the same priority. So if I have two servers that are priority one and they both have a 50% weight, half of the uh, requests will go to one server, half of them will go to the other. If it's 7525, then three quarters of them will go to the one with the weight of 75. One quarter of them will go to the one with the weight of 25. And then we could do another one with a lower priority as a backup in case our priority one servers failed. So hopefully that's starting to make sense. Priorities determine what order we connect them in. Weight determines how we load balance across ones that have the same priority. Your weights for everything in each priority group should equal 100. And then advanced settings, number of settings without a response before we think that it's dropped, maximum number of dropped requests before we say we can't use that server at all, number of seconds between requests when the server is identified as unavailable, then we'll send one every 30 seconds afterwards. Okay, once we're good with that, we just hit OK, and then we can add another server. So I'm going to go ahead and add one more here. 4.11, we're going to set our load balancing, we'll leave it at priority group 1, wait 50, hit OK, and now we have two servers, both have the same priority, both with a weight of 50, so we will load balance across all of them, and we hit OK, and that creates our VPN authentication server group, and then obviously we can double click on it, add, edit, remove, change, delete, whatever we need to do, with that server group. Okay, so that's how we can manually set up a Radius client and a Radius server. Remember, we always need to set up a Radius client. We don't need to do servers if we're doing a single Radius server configuration. We only need to do remote Radius server groups if this device is going to be functioning as a proxy.